and welcome back to No More Miserimus. This is Vlogmas, but to cheer you up. And today we're doing a mini version of a series I do on my channel called Agony Lena, where I just answer your questions. They're usually like, I try and do more existential ones, but sometimes they're practical. Uh, and today we've got a question that says, I'm moving to a new flat this week and I'll be living alone for the first time. I'm an introvert and I'm really excited to have my own space. Do you have any advice on how to make the most of it? Any do's and don'ts? Thanks. Oh, I have so many thoughts. One, I'm just really excited for you. I look back at the year and a bit that I spent living alone really, really fondly. I am probably not, as you've observed from these videos, an introvert, but I would consider myself a mid-trovert. I definitely need a balance of both and having too much people time uh, is a bit interesting and then also I think when you've gone through something like whatever that means and whatever scale I think sometimes like having that time alone and sometimes living alone was really good so I just um called off a marriage long story for another day and um I was unexpectedly moving out of where I was living and all of my friends were in like already in contracts and stuff and I also kind of felt like I really needed to be alone for a while to work out who the fuck I was outside of that relationship so I ended up living alone if you've been on this channel for a really long time you'll remember all the videos I made about it. If there's any that are still live, I'll link them. Um, but I definitely learned a lot that year and um, I've compiled a little list of do's and don'ts for you uh, that I hope you will enjoy. The first one is, do not zip yourself into a dress you cannot zip yourself out of. This is as me metaphorical as it is literal, but for me, that was a literal situation that happened to me. I managed to get a dress done up, went on a night out, and for the life of me, could not get out of the dress. So I ended up sleeping in the night out dress, which wasn't a casual night out dress. It was very explicitly a night out dress. <laughs> Going to work the next day, still wearing said dress and having to get a male colleague to zip me out of it. <laughs> but this point is more just generally about thinking about those things that are actually quite awkward to fix as one person. So either having somebody that lives near you that can come and help you out with that, uh, even if it is at three in the morning is good, but then also just like not getting yourself, it's in the same way that like not putting stuff on on shelves that are really far back and then never being able to get them without precariously balancing on chairs. I often did stuff that was like slightly safer than I'd usually do when I lived alone because I knew that if I fell, <laughs> nobody would hear me <laughs> fall. This got dark very fast. It was supposed to be a funny anecdote about, about getting stuck in night out dresses, but here we are. There were some things that I definitely was, was more careful about um, because I knew there was nobody to get me or zip me out of it. The second one is do make rules for yourself. So I, I'm, I'm kind of like naturally a very chaotic person. I don't know if that's clear from these videos, but I also transpires that I'm a little bit naturally messy. And because there was nobody coming around that much and because there was nobody else in the house to be considerate for, I often didn't treat myself how I treat other people. So I got into like, you know, four day washing up pile situations and like not making things nice, not, not putting things back in the way I would do if I knew somebody else was coming home. And I regret that and I started to fix it towards the end of my time um, living there. Just like almost just kind of treating it like you are the other person you care about and that you'd like them to come home to a nice tidy home sometimes and implementing rules and making sure that when you move in, everything does have a place. I am 100% saying do as I say and not as I do with this one because I was so bad at it. But that's something I wish I'd done is, and and in the same way with, with like anything, like treat yourself nicely, treat yourself how you treat somebody else. And that again was a lesson for me that I wasn't doing that. And that did kind of help me untangle my brain uh, about it. Do give someone a spare key. <laughs> obvious, but wasn't obvious to me for a bit. And uh, estate agents aren't always around to give you spare keys. So even if it's somebody that you only know tangentially from work that lives vaguely near, it's okay to ask that. People have asked that of me and I've never been weirded out by it. Um, so do do that. Have some default audiobooks that you can put on in the background or podcasts, not ones that you're not familiar with or you don't know, but I found it really useful to um, just play audiobooks that I was already familiar with in the background. It was very comforting. It felt like company and Sometimes it was good just to get out of your own head and stop like weird thoughts from happening by having those default 
audiobooks downloaded already onto your phone, ready to go, the ones you love, and like knowing that that's your plan if you feel a bit weird and like everything's a bit silent. Fill your place with activities that aren't screen based. When you're not around another person, it's so easy to spend so much screen time. Uh, and long story, but because the flat to live in was so expensive, I actually ended up just not having internet in my home. And <laughs> while that was like very much a financial necessity rather than like a conscious choice, it did really help me stay off screens or at least use screens more intentionally. I'd watch films that I downloaded off my laptop or do a puzzle when I came home, like do more tactile things just to make sure that you're reminding yourself that you're a 3D person and you're living in 3D, whatever that is. If that's cooking for you, great. But I definitely like started bringing stuff home or like asking for things for Christmas that were tactile activities that weren't on screens. If you're sad, don't just go home without a plan. Either go home, but like on the way, like pick up some ingredients, or something nice you're gonna make, or like make sure you know like that you've got a film that you're gonna watch or something before you get through the door and the silence descends. Make sure you have a plan for an activity if you are sad or forgive yourself and don't go home. I often went to go and sit in pubs <laughs> alone, you know, just get a Coke or a cup of coffee and just sit there for a few hours and be around people to process your emotions. If you're like, if that is something that's gonna be helpful to you or give yourself permission to just go out. There was one night I was really, like, I was a bit sad and I just really felt like a dance with my friends, but my friends lived a bit further away and it was already 10 at night and it was a weekday. So I was like, I'm assuming that nobody wants to do this. So instead I just dressed up to the, like, like I was going on a night out. And I went to this local pub that has like a kind of dance room basically thing and I had a couple of shots and I went up to a group of girls, groups of girls with a few shots in them, inherently very Mrs. Weasley in, in their outlook, if not in the way they <laughs> present themselves. And I just like took a few shots, went up to this group and was like, oh, I've lost my friends. Can I dance with you? And they were like, sure. And I just spent like an hour or so dancing with these random girls I didn't even know the name of, uh, and then went home, had a, had a, had a beverage, went to bed. <laughs> So sometimes just giving yourself like those that permission to go out and be like, right, I don't want to be in here. This is going to this is going to accentuate how I'm feeling. Get out. Have a plan. That advice, however, is for when you're in dire straits. If you're not in dire straits, I would encourage you to just sit with yourself for a bit. Use this time to work out how you act when you're not observed, when nobody's there to watch, whether that is walking around in your underwear, whether that is dancing really in a, in a really silly way or, or, you know, talking to yourself, like verbalizing what you are thinking and working out whether that is like, whether that makes sense to you. There is so little of human life that is unobserved that I learned a lot about myself and the ways I was performing for myself when I was living alone. And it was like freaking invaluable, painful sometimes, but invaluable. And again, when you're not feeling like rock bottom, if you're just feeling like fine, maybe don't feel the silences. Like you don't have to put anything on. You don't have to fill the flat with busyness and stuff. You can just sit in the silences. And that was also like incredibly healing for me just to be able to sit on the sofa and just exist for a while and know that nobody's gonna interrupt you and that you, you're just like being. That nobody's gonna ask you any questions or ask you to pass, pass the soul or whatever. Like, if you can sit in the silence, it's a rarity. And like for me, it, it was felt weird at the time, but definitely was incredibly healing. The next one is do give yourself permission to be a little bit gross and love it. Like I, there are loads of things that like I do that are, you know, very normal. <laughs> but there are things that I'm like, why can't we do that? Like what, what is so bad about doing that? So one of the things that was like my favorite thing to do when I was feeling a little bit silly was cook a fry up while I was running a bath and then sit in the bath and eat the fry up and then get out of the bath, wash up the plate in the bath and then getting on with my day. Granted, a little bit gross. I think I probably did probably run those, those through the dishwasher <laughs> later, but you know what I mean? Think about how you live and think about if there's anything creative or like something that you've, you would really enjoy two activities combining and just freaking do it. Build a den if you want to. Literally nobody cares. It's great. In summary, um, I am always excited when I hear that somebody is off to live on their own for a bit. I think generally it can be really healthy to do whether that's something that suits you for the rest of your life or it will only suit you for a season. I think we go through introverted and extroverted periods of our life and I don't obviously think any of our identities are fixed. So if you need that and you can vaguely afford it even if it means giving up internet <laughs> then do it but I also have like one of the main takeaways I took from living alone and what the truth of how I feel about it is is that it was both the best <laughs> and the worst of times. It, it I experienced the best times in that flat and, and the worst times, 
mainly not just only because I think I was going through that at the time, but also because when you live alone, there is nobody to disrupt your thoughts. So if they are, if you're having a good day and you're having good thoughts, great. No one's there to interrupt you. No one's there to to be a Debbie Downer and ruin your mood or come in like grumpy from their day. That's that's cool sometimes. It's good, it's good to live on that high and like just be able to sit in your emotions. But if you're having a shit time, there is nobody to disrupt that thought process. And that's what you need to plan for and guard against because I definitely felt like I had a lot of extreme sad emotions while living alone that normally I would have been able to like snap out of sooner. But because I'd never experienced living alone I didn't really realize what was happening and that I'd have to snap myself out of it so you kind of have to be your own pet parent a little bit when you live alone but I think that's really good and I'm really excited for this next chapter in your life live alone even for a little bit if you can um, and I've can kind of continued that into my life with like I go on holiday on my own still I enjoy that and I do think it's good to have those times of just like sitting with yourself however uncomfortable it is Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I'm making a video every freaking day up till Christmas. So make sure you haven't missed any. They're all here. Subscribe if you'd like to be here again. And uh, oh, here are the Agony Aunt videos as well. You might, you might need those. Frogsmog out.